Like we serve a see a savior who was tempted in all respects, yet without sin. And so now in Hebrews four, it says, now we have a great high priest who sympathizes with us. So let's go to him when we're weak. The problem is we don't want to keep going. What it is, what it do, YouTube. How y'all doing today? It's your boy, Danny. I'm glad you guys are back on the channel. Oh man. Um, I'm getting excited every time I get on with you guys because it's like a new, you know, uh, it's like it's like fresh and new all over again. OK, and I appreciate everybody that's been, um, you know, tuned in, watching the videos. Um, if you've been subscribing, I appreciate you. If you hit that post notification bell, I, I appreciate you. And if you come in the comment section, I appreciate you as well. All right. Thank you guys so much for your support. It means a lot to me. Please, please, if you haven't subscribed already, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the post notification bell, engage with me in the comment section, and let's go ahead and have a conversation in regards to this video as well. Um, all right, so we are here. You see the title. Um, we had uh, Ms. Jackie Hill Perry. She was on the Craze podcast, all right, and they we're having a deep, deep conversation about, um, you know, some things. And one clip, one as one part of the clip that I found uh, very interesting was her, you know, speaking about, you know, homosexuality because you do know that she was within that lifestyle before, but she, you know, gave her life to Christ and he transitioned and changed everything else to fall in line with her, her life. And her life has been a testimony for her, um, which spoke to a lot of people, but, um, you know, Lecrae asked her, you know, to basically explain exactly what, you know, this whole LGBTQ thing. And she, she answers it perfect to the T and I want you guys to go ahead and, um, let me know what y'all think, man. We're going to go ahead and play the clip right now. Just listen to exactly how she answered this question. At the end of it, she drops like a bomb, right? And it's, yeah, let me stop talking more about it. But yeah, let's go ahead and hop into it all right, right now. And yeah, let's see if she answered that for you guys. I do want to talk about the thorn, as you mentioned. For me, it's always been a controversial issue for me it was, as it pertains to you know, the LBGTQ mm -hmm. community. It's always been controversial for me. One, because a lot of people don't know that my brother's gay. And I have a different proximity, mm -hmm. I think, than a lot of Christians yeah. do. And there's been times when I questioned if my proximity in some ways made me an enabler or mm -hmm. made me like, oh, am I mm -hmm. tripping? Or am I like, you know, I had to, like ask real questions and and like ask stuff. And my brother said something to me and I'm, I'm interested in your perspective. Mm -hmm. I asked my brother, I said, yo, can you help me process what it means for you to be a gay man? Mm -hmm. And he said to me, I would prefer that that's not my identity. Okay, that's good. He said, I prefer that that's not how I am identified mm -hmm. by my sexuality. I'm mm -hmm. so many things. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's good. Mm -hmm. That challenged me. Mm -hmm. A lot of people know your journey. Mm -hmm. And some people, you know, would look at the fact that, well, you no longer have desires for women. Well, I, I'm assuming that. I don't know. You married. So I have temptations. Yeah. Okay. So, but people would say, well, you're not just this celibate Christian chilling in the cut. Like right. you actually went and married a man. Right. And some people, you know, would say, well, you're going against how you're wired and all these types of things. Some people say, well, it's a choice. It's not biological. Mm -hmm. Some people say homosexuality is a sin. Being gay in and of itself is a sin. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, oftentimes I have vantage points and perspective about all of it. Yeah. But I don't feel like I'm qualified, mm -hmm. you know? So one question I'm asking you is... Mm -hmm. A person like myself, yeah. Should we sh shut our mouths? No. Okay. Yeah. And I want I want you to talk about that. But then, other question I'd ask you is, like, how do you respond to folks who are like, "Hey, explain homosexuality as a Christian." Mm -hmm. You know, like, what does that even look like for yeah. you? Well, one, I think all Christians are obligated. And 
justified in saying something about sexuality just because first and foremost we're ambassadors mm. you know like i think that's a part of the great commission is to to teach people to obey all that god has commanded um and so i think i don't think we should feel like just because that's not my struggle i get to opt out of the conversation when really the fundamental struggle is a struggle against sin and we all share that right mm. and so there is a sense in which you do know what it's like to have an affection for something that you should not have an affection for. Mm -hmm. And you know what it's like to put that to death and to mm -hmm. put it to death again and to put it to death again. You know, even if you're a straight man, you know what it's like to live in a society that says, why are you sleeping with one woman? That's mm. silly. Like, like you're not, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm. th like having these cultural voices that try to like lie to you. Like mm -hmm. you know what that's like. Mm -hmm. And so I think if we start to see that there is symmetry between the struggles, even in the distinctions, then maybe that would give us more courage to actually say something. Yeah. I think as it relates to sexuality, I'm starting to feel like the bigger conversation is less about parsing through Romans 1 and, and 1 Corinthians 6 and Leviticus 18, as we should, but I kind of think we're on the side of we need to just start talking about the lordship of Christ over the body. What does it look like to say that God made my body and therefore he has ownership mm -hmm. on how we use it, mm -hmm. right? Oh my gosh. Um, you know, like as she gets um to that end talking about lordship and rulership over the body, it's something that... um. I really agree with a hundred percent and she actually breaks it down as you know uh, as we we're gonna put play the rest of the um, clip here but um she explains it perfectly like it's about lordship and rulership now the bible is true and it says that as many as believed in him to them give you the powers to become uh the sons of god right and um the bible also says those who do those who do not have the spirit of god do not belong to god lordship lordship really means ownership right if somebody is a lord over you they own you they own your possession they own everything that you have so as us christians as we give our life to christ and we profess that we are now you know kingdom citizen and ambassadors of the kingdom that means we give god total rulership total ownership of our mind our body and our soul and he has complete control of that of course we're going to go ahead and deal with temptation of course we're going to go ahead and deal with um sins that we've been fighting the whole time but it's it's, it's up to us to give complete control self-control to the holy spirit to be able to lead us out of each and every sin that we have been struggling with for some people is uh pornography for some people is stealing for some people is lying is gossip so um we have to come to a place where we give God total ownership and rulership over our life. Let me stop preaching. Let, let her continue with what she's saying. I think that is the bigger conversation that we're actually not having. In yeah. 1 Corinthians 6, he talks about how the body is not made, not made. That's not the purpose. It's not made for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body and that the Lord is actually going to glorify this body. So he cares about this body so much mm. that even when you go in the dirt, he's going to give you a new one. That tells me that I need to steward this body while on earth. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know. Mm. I just think. Yes, you do. You just said it. I just think. <laughs> I think sexuality is a hard topic. I empathize with the gay community, with the trans community, even straight people who can't keep their penis in their pants. I empathize with, <laughs> with that. But either Christ is Lord or he's not. That's good. Either he will judge me or he won't. Either the grave is empty or it or it's isn't. Not. And if mm. it is, surely he can give you power to resist every temptation. Yeah. Surely he is that strong. Yeah. And I, I just, I kind of have experienced that he is. Do you feel like historically you've been misunderstood or you were, did you have the clarity you have now when you first started like addressing this in public or when everyone was like, oh, she's talking about what it's like to have been gay. What do you mean by misunderstood? Like, well, I say on one end of the spectrum, I feel like the lesbian community has pushed back on you. Yeah. And maybe for different reasons, right? Maybe it was because they felt you weren't compassionate or maybe it was because you felt like you could pray the gay away. Like where you like there's that's so the primary criticism. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Which is a misunderstanding. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. like misunderstood cuz okay, so what would you say like if that's the mojo they trying to put on yeah. you is all oh, she think you can pray the gay away. Yeah. Like I think some yeah. of it I don't even, I'm not even mad because I think I 
use language that conversion therapists and evangelicals have used, mm. right? And so I think the assumption is because she's using the same language, she must be communicating the same method, and yeah. I'm not. And so some of that is, okay, I can get why you assume that. Some of it, it also is, is y'all lazy. <laughs> You haven't read my book. If you read my book and you listen to my messages, I will consistently say that God does not like heterosexuality is not the fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Self-control is because mm -hmm. now we're assuming that to be heterosexual means you are ethically right. And that's not true because yeah. half of the pastors that's fallen in sin are heterosexual. That's right. So ultimately what I'm saying is that God saves you for himself mm -hmm. and in saving you for himself, he frees you from the penalty of sin and the power of sin. So as you continue to experience temptation and most likely you will, you are now freed from its power. So you don't have to be a slave to it. That's ultimately what I've been saying, because that's what the the apostle Paul says that's what Jesus says that's what the Bible says like we serve a, see a savior who was tempted in all respects yet without sin and so now in Hebrews 4 it says now we have a great high priest who sympathizes with us so let's go to him when we're weak the problem is we don't want to keep going mm -hmm. so it's easier mm. for me to identify myself mm. by my sin instead of pursuing the savior until the day I die that takes time that takes endurance that takes effort and it takes faith mm -hmm. to say that you are better than everything I feel that's what I've been trying to say Lecrae more <sighs> Make that a clip. Huh? Okay. Huh? Listen. Listen. Anywho, man. Yeah, look. Um, she basically, like, just dropped bars on Lecrae. Um, because, you know, uh, I think if you watch the full um, interview, you watch the full podcast, he talks about how he has a struggle with, uh, you know, like the fear of man. So, um, you know, and, I, and a lot of people have that. Like we often, even myself, like, you know, early on in my walk with, with God, um, it's like a tug of war. You're trying to please people, then please God. But the word says, um, like no man sh can have two masters for you will love one and hate the other. So if you are, you know, within the middle of that tug of war and you're being pulled by, you know, both directions, be pulled in both directions by either side to please people or to please God. Um, you're going to either hate God and please people or hate people and please God. You got to choose one. And um, I think that's the thing that he's been struggling with. Um, with his, I didn't know that his brother was gay. So that's part of the reason as to why it's so hard for him to, you know, just speak against the, the thing, but speak against that, you know, that sin. But ultimately, the 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 question is... Is Christ really Lord over your life? And as I stated, if he's Lord over your life, whatever that sin is, whatever that issue is, whatever um, you're dealing with, depression or anything like that. He did say, come who all are weary and heavy laden and burden, and I will give you rest. So the Lord does provide rest for anybody that's going through, you know, a hard time, whether it is with sin, depression, faith um you know whatever it is that you're dealing with once you make him lord over your life he will take hold and own everything that you're dealing with you know to make it light on you because his yoke is definitely definitely easy all right thank you guys so much for watching um you can go ahead and check out the full video the link will be in the uh, description section thank you so much if you you know love the content make sure you subscribe hit that post notification bell and uh comment in the comment section let's have a conversation before you go um i just want to go ahead and give a quick 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 message um if you're watching this and you do not know jesus as lord and savior it is really important that you do that um go ahead and um you know, cry out to God, uh, make it known to him that you do need him and you desire to have a relationship with him in your heart. Like, don't just say it just to say it, but mean it, because the, the, the sacrifices of the Lord are a broken spirit and a contrite heart. So he knows the heart of man. So if you've been struggling with trying to give your life to Christ, please do, because it's the best and awesome the most awesome decision that you could ever make in your life. All right. Thank you guys so much. And uh, I'll be seeing you all in the next one. Deuces.